Welcome to St Marlebone Changing Lives International Women's Day Tour. As many of you will know, the Changing Lives project is dedicated to sharing and telling some of the amazing stories from St Marlebone, including some of the fascinating stories of some of the people who have lived here. Behind me, you will see the Changing Lives hoarding. Some of these paintings feature some of Marlebone's most influential and inspiring residents. Many of these women will feature on today's tour. Join us on our tour as we trek around Marlebone with some of the parish church team, some of the school students and some of the local community. We'll be stopping by a number of addresses and plaques and locations to tell you some of the amazing stories of some of the women who have lived here. This tour is dedicated to the women of today telling the story of the women of the past. We hope you enjoy it as much as we've enjoyed making it. Hi, I'm Clara and I work at St Marlebone Parish Church. Welcome to Stop One of our International Women's Day virtual tour. I'm here at 17 Cunningham Place where Emily Davids lived. Emily was a feminist, a suffragist and an education campaigner. Throughout the 1800s, Emily campaigned for women to access higher education and her best achievement was the founding of Girton College in 1869, which was the first university college to educate women at a degree level. She was also a member of the Langham uh, Place Set, a ladies debating and campaigning group. The group held their meetings in Marlebone and played a vital role uh, in organizing the petition for women's votes. As you can see, Emily worked hard for women to have the rights that many of us have today. And we think that she is the perfect way to start our International Women's Day tour. We are here at 18 Dorset Square, where novelist and playwright Dodie Smith lived during the 1900s. Today, she's remembered by the puck behind us. Dodie was a keen writer and performer from an early age, and wrote her first play at the age of just 10 years old. She moved to London in 1910, when 14 years old, and later in life studied at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. After acting, Dodie began to write scripts and novels. Some of her works include I Capture the Castle and The Starlight Barking, but her most famous in the children's novel, The Hundred and One Dalmatians. When she published in 1956, this book was adapted by Disney twice, and the story remains to be a favorite of many. Dodie was another inspirational Marlebone resident and talented author who paves the way for many female writers. We have made our way to 241 Marlborough Road and in the 1920s it was home to one of Britain's top boxing gyms. It was here that Annie Newton thought to be one of Britain's first female boxers trained. Annie Newton, during the height of her career, was seen to be the greatest woman boxer in the world. She lived in Marlborough and trained here at 241 Marlborough Road. It was clear she enjoyed boxing from a young age and began appearing in stage shows and fairground tents. She would even fight men to raise money for various charities. Later in her career, she was banned from boxing by the Home Secretary as they did not think it was a suitable sport for women. But Annie was a huge advocate for the sport and fought for women to have their place in it. And in the 1920s was a founding member of the Women's Boxing Club. Annie was another Marlebone example of how women could be anything they wanted to be, even if it didn't fit the social norms of the time. Emma Cons was a philanthropist and theatre manager who lived and worked here at 136 Seymour Place during the 1880s. Emma originally studied as an artist, but she was also prom promoted social reformer. For example, she volunteered at the housing projects of Octavia Hill and campaigned for educational opportunities for all. In 1879, she converted this home into a coffee tavern. Here she founded the Coffee Music Hall Company with the goal of creating a non-alcoholic alternative to pubs and gin places. Her first venture was the Old Vic on Waterloo Road. 
Originally, this was opened to the Royal Victorian Coffee Music Hall in 1880, and years later, it also became the venue for Morley's College evening classes for working class men and women. Later in life, Emma became one of three female members in the newly formed London Country Council and was strongly committed to women's suffrage. Emma spent her life looking and fighting for new opportunities to improve the world around her and for that definitely deserves a spot on our tour. Short walk made out to 27 Upper Montagu Street where Jacqueline Dupre lived. Jacqueline Dupre was a British cellist who became an international star by the age of 20. She was a music lover from a very early age and began studying music at just five years old. Her debut solo was at Wigmore Hall in 1961. In 1965, she recorded Elgar's Cello Concerto with London Symphony Orchestra. This piece became her signature through her style and interpretation. Although her career was cut short due to illness, she is regarded as one of the 20th century's great cellists and would have been an inspiration to many aspiring female musicians. Here we are at George Street, where 19th century nurse Mary Seacole lived. As you can see behind this, there's a plaque that commemorates her existence. Mary Seacole was a nurse who provided care for British soldiers at the battlefront during the Crimean War. She was born in Kingston, Jamaica, where she gained knowledge for the, of local medicines and treatments. Mary was in London when reports of the breakdown of nursing care for soldiers in the Crimean War began to circulate. However, her offers to serve as a nurse were refused due to racial prejudice. Instead, she went to Crimea herself and set up the British Hotel to provide aid to the troops. Her autobiography, Wonderful Adventures of Mrs. Seacole in Many Lands, became a bestseller and her work became widely admired. Mary Seacole is a truly inspirational woman and person who spent her life fighting injustices whilst helping others. Hello there. My name is Nikki Palmer from the Harley Street Area Partnership. We are an organisation established to provide a collective voice for businesses and deliver a variety of interventions across key themes. I'm delighted to be invited to be part of this virtual tour as we celebrate International Women's Day 2022, highlighting women in the Marylebone area. As St Marylebone still has a huge connection to medicine, we couldn't complete this tour without mentioning Elizabeth Garrett Anderson. Elizabeth lived and worked here at 20 Upper Barclay Street, Marylebone, during the 1860s and 70s and she was the first woman to qualify as a doctor in Britain. Like others mentioned on this tour, she was part of the Langham Place group, a group which was very much at the centre of an emerging women's movement in Britain. In fact, it was through this organisation that Elizabeth campaigned for women's employment. Elizabeth herself was inspired to go down the medical path, but unfortunately faced many barriers, particularly a ban on female medical students in universities and hospitals. So in the end, Elizabeth had to study privately and in 1865 she qualified. Later that year, Elizabeth Garrett moved to the property to set up her practice. In June 1886, she moved her practice and opened the St Mary's Dispensary for Women and Children at 69 Seymour Place, which is just around the corner. It was the first hospital in Britain to be staffed entirely by women. Elizabeth's work was crucial for the acceptance of women in the field of medicine and indeed making Marylebone what it is today. The Harley Street Area Partnership very much promotes women in business, women in the community and women in life. Hello, I'm Sarah Charlton. I'm archivist at the Howard Walden Estate in Marylebone. And I'm going to talk to you today about uh, Lady Margarita Howard de Walden, who uh, was lived from 1890 to 1976. And she is one of a, a string of Lady Howard de Waldens, or, or um, the wives of, of the, the men who owned this particular estate, uh, who led a notable and interesting life. She married Lord Howard de Walden in 1911 in St Marylebone Church and Lady Howard de Walden was always interested in hospitals and child care and nursing and um, she went, she accompanied her husband at the outbreak of World War I in 1914 to Cairo in Egypt. She returned there very soon after to set up a hospital outside Alexandria. Uh, it was a remarkable 
place, um, a remarkable situation. She got no help at all from the British government or the War Office, uh, but set it up really virtually at her own expense, taking over nurses, hospital supplies, equipment, uh, pyjamas, all sorts of things you might need for a, for a hospital. Very remarkable woman. She came back in 1916 and promptly set up a, a hospital for officers' wives on the edge of Regent's Park. And that too lasted to the end of the war. She was also actively involved in Queen Charlotte's Hospital on the Marylebone Road. Having had to, twins herself, she was horrified at the lack of care being afforded poor women and she managed to get herself on the board of Queen Charlotte's Hospital and she stayed as part and actively involved in that hospital for many years. Although Margarita and her husband Lord Howard Walden never really lived on Maribyrn's estate. They're very connected with it. Obviously Lord Howard Walden was, was the landlord for this part of Maribyrn. Her dynamic and socially minded activities set her apart from many women of her day. She was much more than just a very fashionable, very rich woman. For that reason, she deserves to be remembered, I think, as one of the women of Marylebone. Here we are in Wimpole Street, where Elizabeth Barrett, later Barrett Browning, lived. She was one of the greatest poets of the Victorian era and is commemorated here on the wall of this building. It was while she was living at 50 Wimpole Street that she completed her most famous two-volume collection of poems in 1844. In Marylebone, she also met the poet Robert Browning, who she later secretly married at St Marylebone Parish Church on September the 12th, 1846. She then wrote her most famous work, Aurora Lee, in 1857, which addressed issues in society related to class and the woman question. By 1900, Aurora Lee had been printed in over 20 editions. Elizabeth's poetry often explored the injustices that were apparent in Victorian society, and as with many female writers of the time, she made many essential contributions to the position of women in society today. This is the house number two, Garbutt Place, Marylebone, that commemorates the great Christian housing pioneer, Octavia Hill, who began her work here in 1865. This part of Marylebone is generally known for its wealth. Not so in her day, the slums of Marylebone were known as Little Hell. Along with colleagues, Octavia Hill looked at the filthy, overcrowded slums of Victorian London and her Christian faith constrained her to do something to improve them. Listen to her remarkable words. Our lives in London are overcrowded, overexcited and overstrained. We all need space. Unless we have it, we cannot reach that sense of quiet in which whispers of better things come to us gently. Sensing the need for space, green and beauty for all people. In later life, Octavia Hill went on to co-found the National Trust. A remarkable Marylebone woman who changed many people's lives for better because of her faith. Hello, my name is Emily Mould and I am Jazz Programmes Coordinator and Project Manager at the Royal Academy of Music. It seems apt that during our bicentenary year at the Royal Academy of Music we should be celebrating a woman as fantastic as Evelyn Dove. It was hard to choose just one amazing woman associated with the Royal Academy of Music as so many have walked through our doors, but we felt Evelyn Dove would be a perfect fit for this tour. Evelyn Dove was a British singer and actress who lived in Marylebone and studied piano, voice and elocution at the Royal Academy of Music. She graduated in 1919 and went on to do many amazing things. 
Evelyn performed at cabaret and jazz shows in London and as a member of the Southern Syncopated Orchestra, to name just a few. Her career continued to grow as she performed around the world. In 1939, she became the first black female singer to perform on BBC Radio and by this time had become an international star. Today, she is still remembered and loved. In fact, in 2019, 100 years after graduating from the Royal Academy of Music, she was a Google Doodle. Another fascinating and inspirational woman to add to our tour. Welcome to St Marylebone Parish Church, home of our Changing Lives project and workplace to more of Marylebone's inspiring women. It's the perfect place to end our International Women's Day tour. We've really enjoyed sharing with you some of the stories of the women historically associated with Marylebone and meeting some of the contemporary ones. Thank you so much for joining us and we wish you a very happy International Women's Day.